Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 22 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about using validation controls with ASP.NET Grid View when editing data. Please watch part 21 of the ASP.NET Grid View tutorial before proceeding with this video because this is continuation to part 21. Now, we want to make this gender column within this grid view control a required field. When the user is editing a row and if he selects select gender instead of male or female for gender and then when he tries to update this row we want to present the user with a validation error message stating gender is a required field. We want that detailed error message to be displayed beneath the grid view control and then that little red asterisk next to the drop down list where the error has occurred. Now if you recollect from part 21, we actually converted this gender column into a template field. Initially it was bound field, but we wanted to have this drop down list as the editing interface element. That's the reason why we converted this bound field into a template field. Now since we are already using a template field to display gender uh, within this grid view control, so obviously achieving these validation error messages, it's very straightforward. All we need to do is drag and drop a required field validator control next to the drop down list control and then a validation summary control beneath the grid view control and configure them. But before we do that, let's try to edit a row within the grid view control. Now, let me actually select gender instead of male or female and then let me try to update this. Look at that, I get a totally unrelated error message. That's because if you notice the column length within my, ta I mean within this table TBL employee, gender has got a column length of 10 characters. But then if you look at the word select gender, it has got more than 10 characters. So obviously when we try to, you know, insert that word or update, you know, this record with that word, uh, that string data will be truncated. And that's what this runtime error message, obviously to, you know, avoid this error, we need to increase the column length. So let's go ahead and increase the column length to 20 characters. So I'm using this uh, alter table for that. Now let's actually try to update that row and see what happens. Look at that. Now it gets updated as expected. Now I don't want to allow this. So if they select select gender and if they try to click this update, we want to display this validation error message. As you can see, they should not be able to submit the page. Okay, so obviously to do this, we need to use validation controls. So if you recollect, you know, the column that displays the gen gender is actually a template field. And template field here, it has edit item template and item template. So item template, you know, is used when the row is rendered in non-editing mode. But when I put the row in edit mode, look at that for gender, we are using a drop down list control. So within edit item template, I have a drop down list control next to the drop down list control drag and drop a required field validator. Okay, and we need to configure this required field validator. So what's the error message that I want to display? I want to say gender is a required field. Okay, so that's the error message I want. And then along with the error message, we need to configure other properties we need to set the control that we want to validate. So what's the control we want to validate? Drop down list one. And the text is going to be red, I mean asterisk symbol, because I want asterisk to be displayed next to the drop down list. So I'm setting text to asterisk. And then since we want that to be in red color, I'm going to set four color to red. And finally, look at this, you know, within the drop down list, we have three things, male, female, and select gender. So select gender is the initial value. If the user selects that, we should not be treating that as a selected value. That's why we need to set initial value property as well. So which is select gender. So let me copy that and paste it here. All right, so with that, we should get that red asterisk next to the drop down list in case if we select the word select gender instead of male or female. But then beneath the grid view control, we want that detailed error message. Uh, so to display that, we can make use of validation summary control. So just after the grid view control, drag and drop a validation summary control. And all we need to do here is set the four color to red. All right, so let's run this now and see if the validation 
works as expected. Okay, so let me edit that and let me try to update. Look at that. I immediately get that validation error message. Gender is required. But as I select male and then I try to update that, look at that, I'm able to do that. Now, I want this name and city columns also, you know, to be required fields. Okay, so if that's the case, we need to convert those columns into template fields. Now, look at this at the moment, name and city. So here, name is actually a bound field. So if we want to use validation controls, we need to convert them into a template field. Okay, uh, name and city. City is also a bound field at the moment. So we need to convert them into template fields. And to do that, there are two ways. You can you know, change the HTML in place here. You can convert this bound field into a template field by changing the HTML. Or you can use the designer to generate the HTML for you. And to do that, from the grid view tasks pane, click on edit columns. And from the columns, I want to convert name into a template field. So highlight that and then click on that link, convert to template field. Along that same line, city, convert that into template field. As soon as we do that, look at that, bound fields are now converted into template fields. So if you look at city, for example, here, it has got an edit item template and an item template. Edit item template, meaning when the row is in edit mode, you know, we are using a text box control. Okay, so obviously here I need to drag and drop another required field validator and configure that. And just to speed things up, I have that already typed. So let me copy that and paste it there. So if you look at this required field validator, all we are doing is, you know, it has got an ID of required field validator three, run it is equal to server, error message city is a required field, and then four color red text we have set to that red asterisk, I mean asterisk, control to validate, we want to validate text box to control. Along the same lines, we want another required field validator for a name. So next to the text box control with an edit item template, of name template field, I'm going to paste that again. Okay, so let's give this a different ID. Maybe a required field validator too. Let's say name is a required field and control to validate it's a text box one. That's it. Let's go ahead and run this now and see if it works as expected. Okay, let's edit that. Let me blank out name. Let me blank out city. Look at that. As soon as I tab out of text boxes, I can already see a red asterisk symbol there. And if I select select gender and try to update that, look at that. I get all those three things. Name is required field. Gender is required field. City is a required field. On the other hand, let us fill some details. You know, let's say name is Mike. Gender male. City London. I should be able to update that. All right. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.